I know the city of Napa has supported producer responsibility in a resolution. Has Napa Recycling supported that or just in partnership with the city on certain projects? Correct. We, uh, we've support ported it one in the uh, along with the city for advertising of certain programs even if we aren't the collector and or processor uh, then again as a processor or collect collector of certain products as we are doing now for carpet can you tell us a little bit more about carpet I know it's early it's only uh, here in March of 2012 and that program mm -hmm. hasn't fully rolled out yet but I know you've been trying already to recycle carpet how's that working so we've uh, s started actually at the transfer station which was um, uh, owned by uh, Joint Powers Authority for Napa County Solano County uh, started collecting carpet last May so 2011 May uh, again because a few facilities popped up to start um, recycling the car carpet here one in Oakland one in Sac Sacramento it's been good and bad uh, we took a few loads to o Oakland uh, they would close they would be open it was hard to see so we went to Sac Sacramento uh, things were go go went along fine and then in December they said we're no longer taking carpet for the month of December uh, come back to see us in 2012 and so we have uh, started to re re-deliver car carpet to them. And what would you like to send uh, or say to the uh, operators of that program based on what you've seen so far? So again, I just th think, thinking of the few places that are currently collecting carpet now and if they're, they're having a hard time processing the current amount of carpet, well, what are they going to do when each community actually uh, starts supporting uh, the APR bill and collecting the carpet, bringing it back to uh, the processors. They have to be open um, day and night to be able to um, support the program. And I know you are at the back end of the system, so when the state has um, imposed disposal bans for things like batteries and fluorescent lamps and sharps, have you seen those to be effective? Uh, yes and no. Um, Again, it all comes down to processing. Uh, we can collect anything anybody wants because we do collect it. Uh, we can educate the public on it, but it has to be a convenient way to, way to do it. Uh, cur currently, it's not convenient here to do bulbs. Uh, there are a few drop-off locations, but again, that's convenient for the person that truly cares. The average per person who doesn't have time, uh, you know, the bulbs are in the waste stream. Uh, the batteries especially, the same thing. Pe people look at batteries, they're so small, they only have a little bag, they're not going to take their time to go drive across town to uh, deliver it someplace. So it mm. uh, has to be more convenient for them to be able to be collected at, at the house uh, on a set schedule. And I know for waste haulers and processors, it's really important to protect health and safety of the workers. Can you tell me a little bit about products that may concern you as a, an operator for health and safety and maybe support produce responsibility? So again, even the, the bulbs and bad batteries are one, needles for sure the, the last and most, most important, but the bulb, bulbs and batteries, uh, if handled and disposed of right, uh, they aren't a health concern but when they are put into the recycling the trash uh, since especially since we do sort all our, our curbside recycling on lines uh, bulbs break batteries the problem with batteries on a recycling line they go through the screens they end up in the glass they go to the glass furnace uh, they blow up in the furnace so again they're the safety of the workers at the next processing place too, uh, and then it comes to needles. Uh, need, need, needles have always been a problem from when we, we were collecting garbage and cans and man manually collecting it to now. Uh, people, again, they even if they containerize them, they put them in single stream recycling because they really don't know what to do, do with them. Uh, they see their metal, they think that's a recyclable product. Uh, it ends up coming across our lines and we see them every, every day. Uh, and again, even if they are, end up in the garbage, a lot, a lot of the gar garbage uh, at the transfer stations around North, Northern California is actually processed and sorted to remove 
recoverable products. So again, uh, need, need, needles are a real concern. We have to wear special gloves, long shirts, eye protection. And again, for other products, but also needles are the most uh, dan dangerous in all our employees' minds. So. Mm. And is there anything you would like to share with those watching, the legislators, the folks at the agencies, the manufacturers, about um, the position of the, the waste industry, or you as a hauler? Yeah, again, I, like every other product, product we've had, um, 939 came about, you know, recycle 25%, 50%. You know, if we're given the chance, the opportunity to collect it, that's no problem. And again, it, it ends up being that next market you need to have a market to send this to we, we can collect separate anything but we need to be able to send it to an uh, end market that can uh, handle the product uh, we have the same thing with e-waste e we've been collecting e-waste it's a great program they're set, setting on hundreds of thousands of tons of uh, lead contaminated glass because they have no end market for it uh, so again if if we can identify products that can be recycled there just has to be that in mark market for it because we can collect it we can separate it but if we can't ship it someplace it's no use excellent thank you very much for your time no problem